College football on ESPNU is presented by Vizio. Morgantown, West Virginia is the site for a likely high-scoring affair between the 24th-ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders at 4-1 and, and the West Virginia Mountaineers, a record of 3-2. and two. Along with John Kajemi, Mike Cousins, glad to welcome you to Milan Pushkar Stadium where it's a sellout and a matchup of top 10 offenses. A little pregame football fisticuffs for the Red Raiders and Mountaineers, but it's all love as student battles teacher today with Cliff Kingsbury having Texas Tech off to its best start since his first season back in 2013. His former coach and roommate, Dana Holgerson, just on the cusp of the top 25. Tech in the top 25 behind Nick Shimanick, their quarterback. Well, the fifth year senior, very accurate, especially early in games. You can see for the season, 72% completions, but he completed his first 10 attempts last week against Kansas, led that offense to 65 points. He can get it done from the pocket. The Mountaineers on the other side, the only team in the country with a 300-yard passer every week and a 100-yard rusher in all five games. Love the way Will Greer plays the position of quarterback, has a great feel for it. Five straight games, over 300 yards passing, and then Justin Crawford, he gets it done on the ground, so it's a great one-two punch for the Mountaineers. For the middle of October, you can't ask for much no. better weather than this. We're going to be up into the 70s during the game. There's not a cloud in the sky. And West Virginia, winners of the coin toss, elect to receive the Mountaineers on offense first. Cliff Kingsbury, the head coach for Texas Tech, just 38 years old. Trying to go two games above 500 for his career against his former coach, two guys who split a two-room condo when they were both in Houston. Feels like ages ago for those two guys. Dana Holgerson in year number seven says he hopes he's a little bit ahead of Cliff Kingsbury today. On first down, Justin Crawford out of the backfield makes the catch from Greer and a nice pickup for the Mountaineers. You'll see a heavy dose of Greer handling, handling the football, dealing it outside, and then Justin Crawford either touching it via the run between the tackles or in the passing game. And a toss goes inside for Elijah Wellman, the fullback, who does not touch the ball all too often. And now it's third down for West Virginia. David Stills, the leading receiver for the Mountaineers, one of the guys number one in the country with nine touchdowns. Expect him to be heavily involved. He'll be in the near side slot, number 13. So third down and four on the opening drive for West Virginia. Greer now trying to run his way to a first down and he does not get there. Swallowed up by David Gibbs' defense. On the opening drive, it's a punt for WVU. This is exactly what defensive coordinator David Gibbs wanted to see in the first set of downs defensively. Get on the field, be productive, get off the field. And it looks like Greer may have a bit of a problem with that tough, tough tackle on third down. He got caught from behind by one of the linebackers. Billy Kenny on the punt. And from the 26-yard line, Cameron Batson quickly swallowed up on special teams. So we get set to see the Texas Tech offense second best in terms of points per game in the country, just a shade under 47. Tied with Oklahoma behind only UCF out of the American Conference. Kiki QT. Their top receiver, five touchdowns this season. Loves catching the ball from Nick Shimanek. Yes, he does. Fourth in the country in yards per game at 117. He can play inside. He can play outside. Wherever he lines up, he gets it done for the Red Raiders. Shimanek with all sorts of time. Fires a dart. And the catch is made by Cantrell. One pass, one first down for Texas Tech. And here comes the tempo after a first down. You'll see the Red Raiders get up to the line of scrimmage and run with pace on offense. Empty backfield as the Mountaineers bring five. 
On the screen pass, there is room to run, and it could perhaps be all the way to daylight. T.J. Vasher with just his third catch of the year, and he goes for a 60-yard touchdown. Mike, just a simple wide receiver screen to the outside. It's an easy pitch and catch, but a good block on the outside by Cantrell. He has the ability to line up anywhere in this offense. He lines up in the slot, gets the big block on the outside that springs Vasher for the explosive touchdown to open up the scoring. Real quick strike there. And trying to make it 7-0 now. Not even three minutes into this game. Michael Barden, the kicker, perfect on extra points this year. And he stays that way, 15 for 15. As the number 24 team in the country on the road here, opens up with a quick strike. The freshman, T.J. Vasher, goes 60 yards and leaves a lot of blue and gold in the rearview mirror. Nick Shimanek and the Texas Tech Red Raiders, a fast start and a quick drive, 60 yards through the air to T.J. Vasher to give them a 7-0 lead. All of two plays for the second highest scoring offense in the country, and only three teams throw for more yards than they do game in and game out. Michael Barden's got it teed up for the second time this afternoon. Touchback on the kickoff, and we'll revisit the third down play that ended the opening drive for West Virginia. It was uncomfortable for Will Greer. Well, Greer was trying to step up and make a play. He's keeping the play alive. That's what he does really well. But as he does so, he runs into a forearm of defensive end Colin Hill. And it looked like when he was running to the sidelines, he was holding the neck and it got hit right from behind there with the forearm. Looks like he's jogging off, hurting, but jogging on now for the second series for the Mountaineers. Looks to be healthy and, and ready to go. First and 10, 25-yard line and a wide open spot for Karan Wright who makes the catch out past the 40-yard line. And a nice pickup on first down to get 18. Well, there's an explosive play in the pass offense. Greer to White, who has pure speed on the outside. That's the way to bounce back after a big score on your defense. You want to get an explosive play right away. Great pocket, high throw. It's reached for and pulled in by Marcus Sims. Down the sideline, finally yanked out of bounds. And that's got the crowd to its feet. Mike, not one, but two explosive plays for the Mountaineers. This is just a great effort. Run after catch, 26 yards for the sophomore Sims. He breaks a tackle and up the sideline, and now the Mountaineers close to the 30-yard line. And down toward the goal line. And a touchdown, West Virginia. David Sills with his nation-leading 10th touchdown of the year. A strike from 31. That'll get this homecoming crowd off on their feet. Terrific job. Pass protection. Three pass plays in a row just sliding to his right. Greer throws a strike to the 6-4 Stills. You mentioned the 10 touchdowns leads the country in the Mountaineers' answer. As Texas Tech did it in short time, West Virginia has a reciprocal response to tie the game at seven. What a year it's been for David Sills. West Virginia fans know the story. The guy who wanted to be the quarterback, went to junior college, come back, he's still learning the position, and has torched defenses across the country. And he works so hard at his craft after every rep at practice, after every game, they're going back, hey, how can I improve on my release? How can I be a better receiver or a more viable target? Well, young man, you've done a great job so far early in this season. 
of finding the end zone. 10 touchdowns, and West Virginia answers the touchdown. Three plays, 75 yards. Did a terrific job of coming back. A 46-second drive follows a 33-second drive. So the last five plays from scrimmage, we've had two touchdowns. Expect a lot of scoring between these two teams. No doubt. Evan Staley sends it off the tee. And here it comes from the goal line. Just past the 20. Today, the 112th Red River Showdown. So you got a flag coming in here at the end of this play. But Baker Mayfield, number 12, Oklahoma, looking for a step in the right direction after last week's upset against Iowa State. They'll be at the Cotton Bowl, where they played every year since 1929. Oklahoma, Texas, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. By the kicking team, number eight, for a non-football act. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot, first down. This is number eight's first unsportsmanlike foul as it relates to his potential for disqualification. So if you were with us just a few minutes ago, at the beginning of the show, we showed you some pushing, some shoving on the field before the game. And it keeps going into game action, unfortunately, right now for West Virginia. Kaiser White, one of those big spur backs in this defense for this 3-3-5 Mountaineer defense. And Coach Holgerson wants to make sure he doesn't get number two. Batson's got the catch on first down. The ball came loose as he went to the turf. And the officials say second down. And it might have been Kaiser White who got a hand on the football. Great job of reacting on the perimeter by the Mountaineers defensively. Fending off a block, it was White on the perimeter that forced the fumble. Play clock is down to two. May and have a gotten timeout. a timeout, yep. That'll energize the crowd. Texas Tech calls their first timeout of the half. ESPN College Football is presented by Vizio, maker of award-winning 4K displays, and in part by Axe. Find your magic. High game at 7, West Virginia, Texas Tech, the number 24 team in the country. And for Cliff Kingsbury's squad, this will be just their fourth snap of the afternoon. All three Plays have been passes so far, coming off a week where they ran for 313 yards in a 65 to 19 route in Lawrence over the Jayhawks of Kansas. Second and 12 out of the timeout. Shimanek chased out of the pocket, throws toward the sideline. Cantrell on the comeback makes the catch, and there is a flag where Shimanek was hit back at the 20-yard line. Xavier Preston, one of the linebackers for the Mountaineers, he was in the backfield pressuring Shimanek. Personal foul, face mask, defense number five. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And is on the senior linebacker for West Virginia, Preston. This is a great play by Shimanek being able to retreat, get some ground in the backfield, and then throw an accurate football. But there's the, the penalty on the linebacker, Preston. So added on to the catch for Cantrell, 15 more yards. 
They go from second and 12 in their own territory to first and 10 at the West Virginia 40. Right to the sideline again. And Cantrell off the spin move. Stepped out of bounds. Takes it down to the 30-yard line. And Mike, to your point just a few minutes ago, this is an offense that wants to run to set up the pass, but they haven't been able to get one on the ground. It's been all passing for Texas Tech so far. Last week for the Red Raiders with those 313 rushing yards, just the second time in the last 18 years they had more rushing yards than passing yards. Shimanek pressured again. It drops it off, and it's another first down. It could perhaps have been more for Justin Stockton, who hits the turf inside the 20. He got 11. Short side blitz by the Mountaineers. Defensive coordinator Tony Gibson for West Virginia dialing up a pressure from the short side. And the Red Raiders run the screen right at it, so a perfect call. But six pass plays so far for the Red Raiders on offense. Haven't been able to get the running game, but they haven't needed it so far. Ezekiel Rose checks in along the defensive line, and now Shimanek comes out, and the snap goes to Trey King, who takes it to the right side. A running back, the junior from Wichita, Kansas, and transfer from Hutchinson Community College takes the snap. Offensive coordinator Eric Morris told us about King. Does a little bit of everything. He's that north-south type of runner. Good catch on the shotgun snap to get positive yardage on first down. Fake the handoff on the rollout. Sheminick throws end zone. Intended for Cantrell and broken up at the goal line. Really good pass protection but better pass defense by the Mountaineers. Watch this, nowhere to throw the football. He wants to deliver it short, but he goes back to the outside and a good play on the football by Elijah Battle, the cornerback. West Virginia looks like they're going to bring pressure here on third and medium. Third and five for the Red Raiders. Here it comes, Shimanek with a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Caught by Cantrell inside the five, stretching down at the one. And first and goal on the way for Texas Tech. Cantrell lost on second down, but he wins on third down. Getting the ball inside the two-yard line. That's just great effort by the tall wide receiver. Stock in the running back. The fake is to him. Shimanek falls on top of the pile. Nowhere to go. Thought we might see Desmond Nisby in this situation, the big running back. He's in there, left of Shimanek. Stockton off to his right. And a flag. Offense number four. Five-yard penalty. Second down. It's on the senior running back, Justin Stockton. It looked like there was some confusion on substitution from the sidelines. We saw Nisby come in, and you have to be organized, and you have to be on the football ready to go in this offense. That time the Red Raiders unorganized on second and goal. Shimanek rolling and looking end zone to the back of the end zone and too tall for Derek Willies. Third down. Really? They've, they've got great height at wide receiver too. They're on the edges with Cantrell at 6'3 and Willies at 6'4. They do and you, you expect them maybe to throw a jump ball to the perimeter in the back corner but that was a good decision by Shimanek just throwing that away. Good coverage in the back end, remember, the defense doesn't have to cover a whole lot of territory when the ball's inside the 10-yard line. Free play. Caught by Cantrell. And a touchdown, Texas Tech. Offense, 
offside. Defense, number 49. The penalty is declined. Result of the play, a touchdown. And that's going back to what you said. Take that shot on the outside. Get it on the perimeter where your size receivers are and take advantage. You get contact by the freshman nose tackle, McDougal, and the fifth-year senior quarterback makes no mistake to put that football outside with some height on it. Let your wide receiver win, and Cantrell does in the front corner of the end zone. Just the second start of his career for the nose tackle, Lamont McDougal, a guy who's got NFL lineage with both his dad and his uncle being first-round picks and learning the ropes here against a tough opponent. Cantrell's got size one-on-one. -on -one. Tough matchup. A leap and a grab. Give him six. Still a one-score game. Well, it's the fifth time that the mentor has faced the mentee between Holgerson and Kingsbury. Talking to Dana Holgerson yesterday, he said, oh, well, a few choice words not suitable for air about Cliff Kingsbury. All in good fun. Then but he, he laughed. He said, you know, when he first met him, when he came on campus as a quarterback, you know, he was tough. He was brash. He was certainly confident in his abilities. Told us about a game at Nebraska where he played with a broken collarbone. Yeah, and he developed into a team leader. Guys rallied around Cliff because of that and because of his talent. And two coaches now leading programs that are very competent at what they do. And they were part of a very talented staff and team in 2002. Texas Tech in year three under Mike Leach. Cliff Kingsbury over 5,000 yards, won the Sammy Baugh Trophy, won by Patrick Mahomes last year. Dana Holgerson and Sonny Dykes, assistants, and now two guys who are teamed up again after a stop in Greenville, in Norman, between Lincoln Riley and Ruffin McNeil. West Virginia down by seven, back on offense. And it's White who jumps to make the catch and pick up eight on first down. Well, so far, it looks like a lot of back and forth receivers on both sides making plays. Who's going to make a play in the pocket? Which defense can alter this passing of both teams? So the rare rush. We have not been treated to very much of that today. Crawford goes down quickly. Met by the nose tackle, Mike Thomas. Yeah, Thomas got in the backfield very easily that time. A bust up front for the Mountaineers on that offensive line. But you want to be able to convert here on third down. Keep that momentum going offensively. West Virginia successful on 40% of its tries on third down this year. The four receiver look brings Sills in motion. Greer surveys everything, heaves it up down the sideline. Plenty of contact and a flag. A bunch of contact. Looked like Gary Jennings had at least two steps on the nearest defender, but this may go the other way. So there's a flag at the 42 where the ball was thrown. And there's also a flag back at the West Virginia 25-yard line where Greer went down. It may have been a low below-the-knee hit on Greer in the pocket. So there's a lot to figure out here for Reggie Smith, our referee and company. The ball was underthrown, and there's a, probably a good reason. It looked like Greer was hit below the knee when he was trying to deliver the football. The play. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 40 is the climb. Pass interference. Defense, number seven. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Pressure in the pocket was from Dakota Allen, the linebacker. He was being blocked, and then he lunges at Greer. A dangerous play by a defender on the quarterback, and that's why the ball was underthrown, and you get the pass interference down the field, the right hand 
of Johnson on Jennings. So Greer has been banged around a little bit on these early drives. And he finds Sims on the perimeter, the sophomore from Bowie, Maryland. But if there's one thing in particular that Jake Spavadal, the offensive coordinator, praises Greer for, it is his toughness and his ability to extend plays. He throws behind Jennings, who shows great hands making that catch for a Mountaineer first down. Well, there's no shortage of grit and toughness from Will Greer at the quarterback position. And he's able to, to deal when he has a clean pocket around him. Right back to the line of scrimmage. And a scramble for Texas Tech's defensive line to get lined up. They rush for the pressure, not picked up. Bursting through Eli Howard. And he came right through on a twist along the defensive line. Howard comes in from the defensive end position. He gets to the inside. And that's the rare time where that clock in Will Greer's here, head needs to go off. He's going to start outside and then come inside on that twist, fight back to the outside, and find number seven in the pocket. Quick toss. Jennings is there to make the catch. You go back to what we just looked at along the defensive line. Jake Spavital mentioned to us when we met with him yesterday was that was one of the biggest issues they had against TCU last week on the road. And right now on third down, that's what the Mountaineer offensive line expect. Stunts, twist, some games up front to try to get to the quarterback, Will Greer, and upset the timing in the West Virginia pass offense. Greer on third and nine. He's got a completion to Marcus Sims. Toppled at the 22. First down. Good route on the outside by Marcus Sims and a better throw by Will Greer. He's going to put this football on the outside shoulder pad away from linebacker Jordan Brooks. Just a good throw and a good route. Greer steps up in a strong pocket. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Ball tipped and it falls incomplete. Desmond Smith, the corner in coverage for Texas Tech. Terrific break on the football by Desmond Smith. And sometimes, as a wide receiver, you have to turn in to a defensive back. Desmond Smith has the break on the football. Clearly he's going to pick it off, and that's a good job by Karan White after the ball was touched to throw the defender to the ground. Greer off to a hot start, 11, 10 of 11. Crawford is tripped up in the backfield by Ja'Shawn Johnson. They had the fullback Wellman leading the way, but that was not enough. And Johnson can't get off the field. Well, after making the play deep in the Mountaineer backfield, big tackle for loss. Johnson looked like he was going to be able to get up. Oh. Looks like that ankle or foot may have gotten the, the into the face mask or at least into the headgear. Johnson, the junior from Ennis, Texas, the second leading tackler on this defense behind the linebacker Jordan Brooks, back to his feet. He's helped turn this defense around from one that last year Allowed 44 points a game coming into play today, averaging only giving up 28, and has been the deepest that defensive coordinator David Gibbs says he's had in his three years in Lubbock. This is a defense that's been very opportunistic in taking the football away, and Johnson's been a big part of that. Third and long, this is where you have to protect the football against a team that likes to take it away. Four-man rush against Greer with an empty backfield. Plenty of options. He throws, and it's dropped at the five-yard line. Sims lost it, and it's fourth and 14. You can't ask for anything more. Terrific pass protection by the offensive line. Greer had all day to scan that secondary. He finally finds Sims wide open on the deep in route, and that's just a drop. Mike 
So now the Mountaineers line up Mike Molina for a try from 42 yards. Plenty of leg into that one, and the kick from Molina is good. Drive stalls out for West Virginia. They do get three, and it's 14-10 late in the first. Texas Tech with a four-point lead late in the first quarter here in Morgantown. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go with access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app. And you can start streaming now. No matter where you were, if you were streaming last night, you would have seen some exciting football, whether it was in Syracuse, New York, or out in Berkeley, California. How about the Orange? One of the biggest wins in a long time. And a good start for year number two for Dino Babers and company. All teams off to very hot starts offensively today. Texas Tech two touchdowns and averaging a first down per snap. We thought we would see the offenses going up and down the field and through the air. And Texas Tech, that's, they want to be able to throw the football, but they also want to be able to get that running game started, keep the Mountaineers' offense on the sidelines, possess the football for a little bit longer, and finish drives in the end zone, not kicking field goals. Turning things around, Cameron Batson. Now he's got some space across the 30-yard line. Covered a lot of ground. Talk about finishing drives. That last touchdown drive for Texas Tech was essentially an eternity for That's them. Right. Just a little bit over four minutes. Night and day from the first set of downs. When they it only took two plays to score. Eight-yard pickup on first down for the Red Raiders. Shemenek gives it up for Stockton, who lowers his shoulder as he tries to turn the corner. And is right at the sticks to get a first down to the 35. Both of these offenses, they're, they're looking to get that very first first down and use that as momentum to get themselves down the field in scoring position. And even before West Virginia's defense got set, the ball was snapped. They were ready to go. Trey King as his second touch of the afternoon after a direct snap earlier in the quarter went to him inside the red zone. Tough to substitute defenders when you're going at the pace that the Red Raiders do on offense. Mountaineers going wholesale three for three. They've got Darius Stills, the freshman defensive end, whose red shirt they burned last week, and they're seeing some snaps also. Now a little bit more of that running game we were talking about from Texas Tech here in this set of downs. You didn't get it by design, but you ended up with one on the opening play, and now a couple of runs to get another first down. Jimenek, quick throw and a little bit too high. There is a flag on the back side of the play, though, as his throw went over the head of Kiki QT. Holding defense number 16. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Looked like Avery's going to get called for the hold in the Mountaineers' secondary. He's on QT on the corner route. May have been a tug in the back. Oh, there's the, there it is right there. Just on the, on the back of the jersey. Very slight. That was a very, I, I would say, lenient call. It didn't look like he held him as much as got in the way to 
disrupt his route. It was kind of a hug. A light, light hug. The hug when you know somebody's got a cold, but you yes. don't want to be mean. That's the one. <laughs> and a whistle precedes this first down snap. No indication anyone called time out here. Both teams coming back on the field. I think they were trying to get the ball reset in the correct area. It was marked as a five yard penalty. Should have been a 10 yard penalty there against West Virginia after the penalty on Toyas Avery. So 24th ranked Texas Tech trying to extend its lead here up 14 10 under two minutes left in the first quarter. And it's back to the ground. King tumbles through the line. After that great rushing week they had last week against Kansas. 313 yards on the ground. Most rushing yards for them since 2012 against New Mexico. And they're going right back to it. It's a potential formula for success here again. Kansas has a ways to go to get to the level of Texas Tech and West Virginia, but the Mountaineers rank 109th in rush defense. Shimanek all sorts of time and throws it out of bounds. Shimanek not known for running the football, tucking it and running, but he will extend plays with his eyes downfield. He was trying to get the football to Batson, it looked like, who had a step, but decided to throw that football away. On second down, Stockton explodes out of the backfield and emerges inside the 30-yard line. This offense so far, the athletes on the outside and the guy that does a little bit of everything, Trey King, between the tackles, Moving this football on the drive. Now a third and medium for the Red Raiders. Third and four. Do the Mountaineers bring pressure? They did last time in this situation. Doesn't look like they're going to bring it this time. Shimanek gives it up for Stockton. And he's immediately pushed back by a horde of blue and gold. Not enough for a first down. Well, Mike, you mentioned Darius Stills, the, the freshman, the true freshman for the Mountaineers up front. He was a man in the middle that time, being able to take on two blockers at the point of attack. And Texas Tech's going to keep their offense on the field and give it a go on fourth down. Haven't seen a lot directed toward QT just so far this afternoon. Number two in white. And we've reached the end of the first quarter. High octane, high energy with a sellout crowd here in Morgantown. A combined 24 points in the first 15 minutes with the number 24 team in the country on the road looking for a win. As they say on the road signs, when you drive into this state, it's wild and wonderful. 15 minutes have lived up to the billing. Plenty of first quarter action. We have Texas Tech out in front of West Virginia, 14 to 10. When the first quarter expired, the offense was still on the field. And now it's the kicker, Michael Barden, for a try from 44. timeout Texas Tech that was going to be a delay a game that's a and it looked like it looked like Barden had a reset two or three times before he attempted the kick so on the sidelines head coach Cliff Kingsbury calls his timeout so they don't lose five yards so another shot coming up here for fourth and three 
for Texas Tech. This is our all hands in play brought to you by Allstate. And a nice start to the day for Dylan Cantrell. He's done a nice job catching the football, especially on the perimeter, on the side, in front of cornerbacks, and then great positioning of the football there by Shimanek in the corner to Cottrell. John De La Garza, the holder. Barden gets good leg into it. But it's no good. And a legion of 60,000 in blue and gold. Very pleased with that result to keep it a four-point game. Well, anytime you can force the opposing offense to kick field goals and get stops on third down, that's the team that's going to be behind in terms of keeping pace. So West Virginia kicked a successful field goal early. This time, Tech ends up going wide right, and that's the second miss in a row for Barton in consecutive weeks. Missed from 44 last week against Kansas. Greer knocked around a good bit in the first 15 minutes, has all sorts of time, and that ball is knocked away by DeMarcus Fields. Nice job from the redshirt freshman to get the arm in there. You mentioned, Mike, plenty of time. That's three or four times that Will Greer has had ample time to scan, let his receivers work. That's a good break on the football and a good play with that left hand by Fields. 10 for 13, 129 yards for Greer, who's thrown for at least 300 in all five games this year. Fakes the handoff and throws for Sims along the sideline. He rumbles his way across the 30 to the 32. It's another third and short early in the drive for West Virginia, back in their own territory. Third time they've seen this already today. Never discount Crawford coming out of the backfield for a nice pitch and catch. Here comes the pressure off the back pedal. Greer still standing and toppled back at the 16 yard line. Willie Sykes breaks through. The former Arkansas Razorback helps bring him down. The Red Raiders bring pressure from the fields, and it's Sykes coming right in the vision of Greer. Greer cannot keep his feet even to throw the football away, and that's a big loss on third down, which should turn into great field position for the Red Raiders. It's a matchup of former SEC players right there, a Razorback and Greer, the former Florida Gator. That punt turns to the sideline at just about midfield, which is going to be great field position and a four-point lead for Texas Tech. Trying to go to five and one, and their resurgence has come back into the top 25 for the first time since 2013 because of a lot of healthy bodies and JUCO transfers on defense. And they have been able to take the football away. I, I think that's probably the biggest thing. The points, yes, absolutely. Yards, but taking it away and turning those takeaways into points. West Virginia giving the football now to an offense that scores 46, almost 47 points a game on a very, very poor punt. Short field. Only 27 yards on the punt. King on first down gets it. Back to the defense briefly under David Gibbs, who's in his third year with this school now. He said, if we could have been ranked 180th last year, <laughs> we would have been. We would have been. Yeah. Well, that improvement on that side of the football has been dramatic, and it's helped this team offensively start with pos ball position and field position like they have right now. Shimanek on the run, he throws, finds Cantrell, who stretches the play all the way down to the 26-yard line. If you're West Virginia, you have to stay in pass coverage because Shimanek's not going to run the football when he breaks contain. When he breaks contain, he's going to continue to look for his playmakers. That time, he's able to find one for 20 yards because his eyes are down the field. 
Just a terrific job by the quarterback extending the plays and finding Cantrell. QT goes in motion. Haven't called his name much, but here he comes back inside with the screen and with some speed. Moving upfield and dragged down the 13-yard line. A gain of 12 for the junior from Lufkin, Texas. Mike, that's the guy you want with the football in space. You can tell by the, the one time he gets it, he's able to elude, he's able to break arm tackles, and he's able to be explosive in this offense. Three in and three out along the defensive line for West Virginia as they get a rare moment to breathe with Texas Tech on offense. And now well within striking distance at the 13. Jimenek wanted the corner. It closed down quickly. Now to the middle of the end zone. Looking for Quan Shorts. There again is a great example of Shimanek extending the play, but good awareness in the secondary by Avery. He knocks that football loose. Came a long way from the top side of the football field all the way to the middle to get a shoulder pad and, a, and an arm on that football. Stockton goes left. Now a jitterbug back inside the 10-yard line. Coming off a career-high 161 yards last week against Kansas. His best game personally since his freshman year. Mike, you talked about this earlier. The Red Raiders offensively, they have size on the outside. This might be one of those opportunities where they throw the football up to a 6'4 wide receiver or a 6'3 wide receiver and play jump ball. A sidearm sling toward the goal line, a stiff arm, a stretch, and a score. Kiki QT with his team leading sixth touchdown of 2017. There was a flag thrown in the end zone. The result of the play is a touchdown after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number two for taunting. A penalty will be insist on the kickoff. We'll try for point. This is number two's first unsportsmanlike foul as it relates to his potential for this play. Well, Mike, I know that head coach Cliff Kingsbury isn't happy with the penalty, but he's happy about getting the football to his playmaker for six points. Standing tall in the pocket is Shimanek. He delivers outside, and then Askew Henry, a full head of steam, but QT stops on a dime, cuts back to the inside for six points. And draws the 15-yard penalty. He brought his finger to his lips. Yeah. One of those decisions you don't like as a head coach, but you like the result of the play. This is just good execution from the pocket. Your fifth year senior getting the football out quickly to your playmaker for six points. Well, it's one of the longest road trips in all of college football. Lubbock, Texas to Morgantown, West Virginia. The trip not phasing the number 24 team in the country right now up 21-10 over West Virginia. Six plays, 45 yards, 231 off the clock. QT goes in from six on the reception. 21 points for Texas Tech. It's a team that can score a lot of points, and West Virginia is going to have to answer here either on special teams or when quarterback Will Greer gets back out on the football field. Penalty on the touchdown results in a kick from the 20-yard line, and Sims takes it from the 10 for West Virginia. Back and forth he goes and ends up at the 32-yard line. A pretty weak penalty. Just a shush of the crowd. Yeah, I thought it was, too. I was waiting to see what QT did in the end zone and just put his uh, one finger up to his face mask and tried to quiet the crowd. It was an index finger, by the way, we should mention. Yeah, it was. <laughs> West Virginia, they need to get on track 
running the football or at least staying out of those negative yards plays. Two sacks for 23 yards. You see the numbers total on the ground. They have to get something going offensively, and if it's not on the ground, Will Greer needs to extend those plays in the backfield and find a receiver downfield. So a quick throw, perhaps, to jumpstart things. Finds Karan White coming off a career-high 138 yards last week in Fort Worth. Crawford takes it, and he is quickly stood up by Dakota Allen, the linebacker, and pushed back. Well, that's where the strength of this defense is. Up front, allowing those linebackers to roam, and it's Allen and Brooks and Coleman doing most of the damage. That time, Allen stands up Justin Crawford. If you're the Mountaineers, you have to find a way to convert here. Third and short, this is where you need to be able to win at the line of scrimmage. Well, Greer trying to stretch it to the far side, and he slides somewhere. His offensive coordinator, Jake Spavadol, is That's smiling right. and clapping. They've been pushing him so hard. Just get down and save your body. He's such a competitor, is Will Greer, that he wants to dive and, and extend plays all the time. This time he goes to the ground, he goes to the baseball slide. Even the crowd appreciated it because you know when you slide, most times you're going to be able to come back and play that next play. Against a four-man front, he gets rid of it across midfield, and Sims gains nine. So Sims has been a popular target today. Came into this game with only 11 catches, but has accounted for a good chunk of the Mountaineer offense. And this is a nice play to possibly take a shot downfield, second and very short. Just at another sidearm throw, gets a first down, and not too much more as Jennings is brought down by Jordan Brooks, the other linebacker playing there with Allen. And this is the area of the field where you have a lot of room to get receivers down the field, and the way the Mountaineers have protected might be a good time to look down there. Well, soft coverage on the outside. So a throw to Sims gives them some pretty good yardage. And a flag comes in on the late hit as they were going out of bounds with Willie Sykes, who sacked Greer on the last drive, the defender closest to Sims. That's going to cost the Red Raider defense 15 yards. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number 19. 15-yard penalty. First down. Momentum on the side of the Mountaineers right now in a decision by Sykes. Clearly, Sims is going out of bounds, so just kind of help him out of bounds, but without laying the shoulder or dropping the helmet down, that's going to cost you 15 every time. First and 10 at the 19-yard line. A dart finds Sills sneaking up the sideline. That line. could be another and there's 15. another flag on a late hit out of bounds from Texas Tech. Only the second target for Sills today, but getting right where he's found most success this year in the end zone. Is that the ball carrier stepped out of bounds at the 12 yard line? After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense number 15. Half the to the goal, automatic first down. So Sykes makes a bad decision on the play before. This time it's Tony Jones, the rush defensive end that makes a late hit out of bounds. And now the Mountaineers inside the 10 yard line. On first and goal, Crawford through the middle. A modest game. This might be an opportunity for Will Greer to use his, his legs on the perimeter dashing or sprinting out to the right side, the wide side of the field where three receivers are at his disposal. Jennings, Sills, and White all to the top of the screen. Greer gives it to Crawford, and he's in untouched. 
Six more for West Virginia. The Mountaineers can pull to within four. Mike, you talked about getting back to the run. West Virginia had to find some traction on the ground. Inside the 10-yard line, Crawford walks in. Terrific job by the offensive line of the Mountaineers. Hat on hat, and he wasn't touched. Crawford's offensive game has expanded this year. Rushing for 100 yards in all of the first five games. He was a 1,000-yard rusher last year, but only four rushing scores. That's his seventh of 2017. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the three-row Mazda CX-9 and Old Spice. Ah! Everybody together. Ah! <laughs> that might be what Bob Huggins, whose team was honored on the field, Sweet 16 team, is saying when they realize how long they're going to be on a plane to open their season. They're going to Germany at Ramstein Air Force Base to take on Texas A&M on November 10th. So college hoop season less than a month away. Hard to believe. Doesn't feel like it today. No, it doesn't. In the 70s here in Morgantown, and two top 25 caliber teams, 24th ranked Texas Tech against West Virginia team that is just on the verge of being in the top 25. Now don't forget, we're still in the middle of NFL season as well, and you can kick off your week six with ESPN at 10 Eastern. Our Sunday NFL countdown crew will have early, all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and a preview of each game right up until kickoff. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. We got 7.44 left here before halftime, which I think means we can squeeze in about 15 possessions in about before yeah, that. 21 more points, <laughs> that's right. Texas Tech scoring chances on all four of its drives. Only a missed field goal, a blemish so far for Nick Shimanek and company. The quarterback who has waited his time. Looking down the sideline, there's a lot of contact there between Cameron Batson and Toyas Avery. Well, it sure did look like a lot of contact as Batson was trying to go back to the football. That one probably deserved a flag. There's a couple others early in the game that didn't. That was a lot of contact by Avery. If there was a flag, you certainly would have understood def defensive pass interference with an intent to impede. Nevertheless, second and 10, and a dart to the 29-yard line. How about the stop, though, from the senior, Mike Daniels? When you tackle with leverage, you can make the opposition look foolish. And that time, Mike Daniels got underneath the pad level of the wide receiver on that quick screen. It just drives him back towards the line of scrimmage. West Virginia playing heavy zone on third down. With eight defenders back, Shimanek takes off and stretches forward at the 34-yard line, but he's just shy of a first down for Texas Tech. Mike, in the Big 12 Conference, you must tackle in space. If you don't, you're going to get exposed. That time, Kenny Robinson comes up from the cornerback spot and is able to tackle Shimanek to the ground before he gets enough yardage for the first down. That's just a textbook tackle in the open field. First punt of the day as well for the Red Raiders. Panazolo is going to make a run for it. He's got the first down. The native Australian turns the corner, and Trickery keeps Texas Tech on the field.
Sometimes you have to go in your bag of tricks. And this wide side fake punt, I didn't think it was going to get there. Could have been a hold. It wasn't called, and that allows the success out on the perimeter. You see the bench excited, head coach excited. Sometimes you have to lay it on the line early in a game or late on a game. This time, Cliff Kingsbury decides, you know what, it's time. With 6.01 left to go and counting, we have to hold possession of the football. Well, it's been all about the Texas Tech running attack, right? Punter, 13 yards and a first down. Huge play. Shemanek steps into this deep throw, looking down the middle of the field. A leaping try, and a touchdown, Texas Tech. Wow, what a catch. T.J. Vasher goes up to get it, and from 53 yards out, six for the Red Raiders and a Sports Center top 10 nominee. Come on, at 6-6, T.J. Vasher, the ball is underthrown. He climbs the ladder and fights through the battle to the ground by Kenny Robinson. Great strength, terrific con concentration, and the ability to possess the football as he falls into the end zone. So this will go to the replay booth. I don't think there's any doubt. I'm not so sure. I don't think it's on the catch. It's about the spot. The spot of the football. What a catch by T.J. Vasher. He's 6'6". He climbs the ladder about the five-yard line. Let's see if his knee touches or his backside touches. The ball, all it has to do is break the plane, but it's low on his hip. Remember, it was ruled a touchdown on the field. So he's going to possess the football about the three-yard line. He's down there, but does the tip of the football break the plane of the goal line. And remember, you need indisputable video evidence for that. The call on the field was a touchdown. I think it's gonna stand. I'm with you, and so it goes up to the booth for Jack McDonald and Rick Lumier, the replay officials this afternoon here in Morgantown, to chat with Reggie Smith. What strength going up and catching the football Well, you have, to, you have to applaud head coach Cliff Kingsbury. He rolls the dice on the, on the punt, the fake punt, and it's just a, it's, it's almost like a sudden change. You get that injection of adrenaline, and now you go for it on the next play, and it pays off. Texas Tech's lead is 28-17. What a day for T.J. Vasher, the freshman, came in with two catches on the year. He's got two touchdown catches today, and he can watch himself on sport. The man with the golden arm, Nick Shimanek, a 53-yard heave to find the end zone, and his freshman target at 6'6", T.J. Vasher, Texas Tech 28, West Virginia 17. His percentage is high, his decisions are solid, and he, he just finds playmakers out on the perimeter. And how about the call, faking the punt, and then the next play going over the top for six points. Kick off a few yards deep. And the return toward the sideline for Sims. There's a flag down at the 19. During the return, holding, receiving team number four. Have the distance to the goal. First down. Going back to that last drive, Dominic Panazzolo on for the first time. He's punting. No, he's not. He goes around and uses that speed. He's able to keep the offense on the field. And then the next play, it's Shimanek over the top to the 6'6 basher, his second touchdown on the afternoon. So you take advantage of special teams on the next play and, and you find six points. 
28 on the board before the break for Texas Tech. Second highest scoring team in the country. Coming in at just under 47 points a game. And all but the missed field goal, they would have scored on every possession. So already over their average for one half of play. Greer gets rid of it quickly, and the defense converges perhaps even quicker as Deshaun Johnson is there to bear hug Gary Jennings. Seen a lot of those quick passes from Greer. On the perimeter, it looks like the Red Raiders defensively playing a little cushion on the outside, so you have to take advantage. It's almost like having an uncovered receiver. Now on a late blitz, the throw goes across the middle, and it sills. When they can target him in the middle of the field, that's sometimes where he makes his most dangerous breaks. Well, they need to find him more in the middle of the field. He's the guy that's led this team with big plays and explosive plays in this offense. Inside handoff to mix things up. Kennedy McCoy gets the carry. Just 12 yards on seven carries for him last year. They've got McCoy. They've got Martel Petaway also behind Justin Crawford, who are going to get in there when he needs a breather, but it's going to be Crawford's show for the most part. Off to the right side, McCoy again, the sophomore from North Carolina. Short of the sticks, out to the 30, brings up third down and three. And I would look for one of those in moving routes primarily to Sills here on third down. Something you can body up, put your body in front of the defender and not allow him to get to the football. The blitz comes right up the middle, then the pass is thrown and caught by Sims. The flag comes in at the line of scrimmage. As it stands now, first down at the 35. And those were two quick flags. Primarily indicates holding up front. Personal foul, chop block, offense, number four and number 73. Half the distance to the goal, repeat third down. The running back, Kennedy McCoy, and the offensive lineman Josh Sills combining for the chop block. Yeah, Sills on the left, uh, there's your running back and the right tackle. Looks like he's, Sills is going to move actually to his left side and it's the left guard that gets the chop block. So that's going to move the Mountaineers in third and very long when this offense needs to try to stay on the field. Late blitz up the middle, and Greer escapes the first wave. Now looking to throw along. A flag comes in as the throw at the sideline is caught by Karan White. It'll be a fourth down and one Holding after the catch. Offense number 73. Half the distance to the goal. Down. Yeah, there's two penalties in a row on Josh Sills up front. Gets the chop block in combination with Kennedy McCoy. And now the holding. 73 left guard. Will Greer is going to escape the sack. Short field again for Texas Tech. Number 24 team in the country looking to go to 5-1. Back in the top 25 for the first time since 2013. TCU at 2-0, a perfect 5-0, and, and they've got the easier part of their schedule coming up. Texas and Oklahoma later today, 3.30 on ESPN. Dana Holgerson not too pleased with what's transpired here so far. Well, he's, he's unhappy about the punting game. I can tell you that. He's tried two punters, and I don't think either one of them have kicked it over 40 yards. It's a powerful run for Trey King on first down. So two and a half minutes here in the half. You've got Texas Tech up by 11 over West Virginia. They're set to get the ball to start the second half. This is huge for the Mountaineers defense. Paramount that the Mountaineer defense holds the Red Raider offense to a field goal opportunity. That has to happen. 
Four receiver look. Cantrell was the target, and the ball bounces right off the chest of Elijah Battle. Had his eyes been in the right spot, he could have been turning around and going the other way. He could have still been running towards the West Virginia end zone. This ball hits him right between the one and the nine, and I'm not so sure. This ball is well behind Batson. I, I don't think he was ready. I think the receiver took the route a couple steps further than Shimanek thought or expected. Big down for West Virginia here to get off the field. Shimanek looking for QT. He's got him for a first down and then more right between the hash marks. He is quick and elusive, and he moves the chains. He is explosive when he gets his hands on the football. That completion for 12 yards, and how about the half roll to the left, backpedal, and throwing off your back foot by the fifth-year senior. This is pretty pitch and catch. Terrific job by QT knowing where he is on the field and getting north and south. Throw on the rollout. Still working. Demarcus Felton, the junior from Houston, takes it inside the 20 with a minute 42 now. Do you think it enters the offensive ecosystem of Texas Tech to slow down and, and waste the rest of this half? That was my first thought, but I don't think that's in their DNA. I, I'm not so sure that's in the way they play offense. For me, if it was Felton there, I'm, I'm landing in bounds. I'm staying in bounds and letting the clock run down. Off to the left side. Nisby, flag at the end of the play. Big week for Nisby last week at Memorial Stadium in Lawrence. Four touchdowns for the junior. That's the center, Paul Staywars. They've had continuity along the offensive line as of late as well. Stay Wars played both guard spots last year, but the offensive line starters have started each of the last three games. And it's with Bruffy, the left tackle, coming back into that lineup to really solidify the offensive West line. Virginia has opted to start the clock on the snap. Jemenek gives it up first down. Trey King off to the left side. Benton making a good open field tackle for the Mountaineers from that middle linebacker spot. We haven't mentioned his name a whole lot today. That ball's been on the perimeter and by the front seven a lot. He's their leading tackler. With the way the field goal unit has been for Texas Tech, you want to get six points here. That's your mindset. They've missed their last two opportunities with field goals. The look is all to the left side. Now it's on the run. Shimanek toward the sticks. And he dances out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Mikey doesn't do it often, but when he does, I don't think the defense can come off in coverage that, that's going to be that runs going to be good enough it looks like for a first and goal opportunity 15 yards on the ground and that's due to watching tape and seeing his eyes always downfield the defense has to, they, they must stay in coverage they have to do that and respect the playmakers around the quarterback first and goal at the seven still one time out left for texas tech and a flag A couple penalties, taking a timeout may not be the worst thing in the <laughs> That's world. Right. Regroup and figure out exactly where you want to go. Remember, size on the outside with these receivers. T.J. Vasher, who already has two touchdowns, he goes at 6'6". You've got guys on the outside in Cantrell, who's 6'3". And then you've got the playmaker, QT, in the slot. 
And Stockton, the running back. Fake to Stockton. Now Shimanek wants the corner of the end zone. And his pass is intercepted by Mike Daniels. His second interception of the year. And what a time to do it. There's a flag on the play, a late flag on the play. Well, just when West Virginia makes a play on the perimeter, and Mike Daniels might have got away with a push on QT, he comes up with the interception. But a mistake in the middle with the roughing the passer call is going to take it back. The ball's well gone. Yeah, that's just a, an awful decision by Preston. He actually lunges, leaves his feet, and lunges at the quarterback and negates the interception. That's a killer. First and goal and a chance to add to their lead. Just going to be a targeting review. Well, Preston left his feet, Mike, and he got up in that head and neck area with the crown of the helmet. And there was contact there, and that drew the flag. So the officials are going to take another look at this to see if this is going to be one of those targeting fouls with ejection. So what we get here is having just thrown the pass, you have a defenseless player, a quarterback. Xavier Preston leaves his feet, launches. I'm not so sure. I think the penalty was warranted. I'm not so sure if the injection is going to be. So as it, a defenseless player, it could be forcible contact to the head or neck. It can be. But did he hit him with the crown of his helmet, I think, is part of the question, too. The dip of the helmet kind of indicate that's one of those indicators. The launch, he leaves his feet, and the dip of the helmet, those are the indicators the officials are looking for in replay. You see both of those. After further review, there is no foul for targeting on the play. However, the foul for roughing the passer will still be enforced. Automatic first down. I like it. I, I like the result of it. it. It's a penalty, but I don't think it was a, a vicious hit to the quarterback. Even though he was just getting rid of the football and he was defenseless, it wasn't with the crown. It wasn't directly in the above above the headgear, above the face mask. It didn't it, result in forcible yeah, it, contact. Yeah, it didn't get the shoulder or the crown of the helmet to targeting the quarterback. But it is still first and goal for Texas Tech with the ball on the West Virginia six. They go big and hand it off to Nisby, who's driven back at the legs. Great pressure from David Long in just his second game of his season back from injury to get the stop. Well, this defense is looking for energy. They get it in him coming back to the lineup, and now the Red Raiders, with 25 seconds in counting, they have to work with efficiency. Quick snap, Shimanek, a dart across the middle, and the pass is incomplete. A potential touchdown falls to the turf. QT was there. That's one you would expect the catch in the touchdown by QT. Quarterback knows it. He's frustrated because that's one you can't get back. He throws the ball right behind the linebacker, right where QT is going to have his momentum going to the back of the end zone, and you drop it on second and goal. You have to be careful here. You have to be careful here if you're Texas Tech. Even though you have... A timeout remaining you don't want to take a sack you don't want to make it more difficult if you have to kick a field goal give it a opportunity to add to their 11 point lead and they get the ball to start the second half as well here in morgantown 
Here's our championship drive update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Start of the game at K-State, delayed by weather. TCU, Jesse Ertz, I haven't checked lately whether no. he's gonna be out there. It was a injured player at quarterback during the week for K-State. Big one at 3.30 at the Cotton Bowl. And Oklahoma State off a of bye week. We'll try and hand a sixth loss to Baylor. Out of the timeout, third and goal. Hand off on a big sweep, trying to get the corner and get to the end zone, and the pile goes out of bounds. Not enough for a touchdown on third and goal. Certainly plenty of opportunities here with great field position for Texas Tech. Can they punch it in? I think they're going to take their time out and talk about it. Fourth and goal at the one. Nine seconds before halftime. As they talk about it, we'll tell you more about some college football we've got for you later today on ABC. Georgia Tech and Miami, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, and then out to the Coliseum in L.A., 8 Eastern, as Utah takes on Sam Darnold and USC. Just a year ago, it was Darnold's first career start against Utah. You can catch both of those games streaming live on the ESPN app. Darnold with 12 touchdown passes, over 1,700 yards, and how about that finish for the U at Florida State last week? Last offensive play for Miami, they find six points in a win in a game. They broke that seven-game streak, that winning streak of the Seminoles over the Canes. And with them up to number 11, a win for Georgia Tech could push them into That's the top right. 25. Paul Johnson and that crew, after losing to Tennessee, have won three straight. So on the one, Michael Barden is out to try for the field goal, but hey, We've already seen a fake punt today. No, sir. Don't talk me into this one. <laughs> get your points, get into the locker room, and get the ball in the third quarter. It's about as easy as it'll come for a field goal try. Only if it were between the hash marks for Barden, the junior from Austin, Texas. You know, a lot of people and, and some kickers always like the football back behind the five-yard line because when you get inside and the ball's on the hash, that's a more difficult kick. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. And, and I think that's why you get the delay of game. You move it off the one, you get it back to the six, you get a better angle for your kicker. Trying to make it 31-17. Barden gets it up, and he missed it. Off the uprights. Well, that'll energize the, home, the homecoming crowd here. Unbelievable. Barton hits the left upright, and the Mountaineers find a way to go to the locker room, only down 28-17. And this should be automatic. You know, we saw earlier head coach Dana Holgerson scratching his head because of his punting unit, his punters. I would think on the other side, head coach Cliff Kingsbury has to be shaking his head about his field goal unit and his kickers. That's three consecutive kicks that that unit has missed. Missed from 43, missed from 23, and from 44 last, last week, week against Kansas. Nevertheless, Texas Tech will have a surge coming out of the locker room after the break as they'll get the ball. They've got the lead, number 24 team in the country. On the road of 28-17 here in Morgantown. Our ESPNU Halftime Report is coming up next.
little fighting, a little delighting, but it's all been exciting here in Morgantown as we're glad to have you with us this college football Saturday on ESPNU is brought to you by Vizio. At the break, Texas Tech, the number 24 team in the country, 28, and West Virginia, 17. Along with John Kajemi, Mike Cousins, as we get set for the start of the second half here on homecoming weekend in Morgantown, a sellout crowd announced well in advance of this one. West Virginia, winners of the opening coin toss, took the ball to start the game. And so Texas Tech gets it here to start half number two with the 11 point advantage. First half was pretty solid for the Red Raiders. Six drives, four of them ended in touchdowns. Yeah, a total of 338 yards, and it's set up by their quarterback, Nick Shimanek. He does a great job of locating the football outside to Cantrell for six points. It's just pitch and, pitch and catch in the beginning. And then after a fake punt, 53 yards later, TJ Vasher is going to catch, climb the ladder, catch it at the five, move into the end zone. Great concentration and strength shown going up and getting the football but that wasn't all on the defensive side they were able to pressure the pocket they were able to squeeze quarterback will greer with eli howard getting a sack willie sykes getting a sack and being able to be effective in the offensive backfield quan shorts the receiver on first down there are two flags down on the first play of a half the sophomore shorts makes the catch holding Offense number 13. Happiness correction. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's on the senior wide receiver, Cameron Batson. Coming out in this third quarter, West Virginia defensively, they have to take advantage now of pushing the Red Raiders back. They're inside the 15 at the 12. They have to be able to take advantage of this field position, flip it for their offense and get back in this football game. Get this crowd back in this football game. Both teams struggled with first half penalties. 153 penalty yards combined in the first half. So we were getting an announcement, now we're not. But it is a first down and 20 back on their own 12. Left side, Stockton slips away from the first wave. A flag down. And the Red Raiders may be going backwards again. Holding offense number 79. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. The left tackle, Travis Bruffy. Well, if this drive continues this way everything will be coming up Dana over the last few minutes in this game for West Virginia with the missed field goal by Texas Tech at the end of the half they missed two first half field goals so they left a few points on the board and now the defense has Texas Tech pinned back deep they need to get to the 32 yard line for a first down similar look is what they had just a snap ago as Stockton gets ridden out of bounds along the far side by Toyas Avery. Mountaineers need to keep everything in front of them and come up and make tackles in the open field. You know that Shimanek's going to be able to push the football down here on second and third down. What the Mountaineer defense needs to do is rally to the football, come up and tackle, keep everything in front of them. He's showing one deep safety here. That's Askew Henry. Shimanek looking to throw. He goes over the top of the first wave of defenders and hooks up with Dylan Cantrell to make third down much more manageable. And Mike, when you have that type of timing in the pass offense, you can't stop that play. You're able to drop it over the under coverage in front of the cornerback and get yourself in a more manageable third and nine instead of third and 15 or third and 20. Shimanek perfect on third down, four of four.
Just a three-man rush from West Virginia, and they still flush him out of the pocket. And it goes down back at the 18-yard line. Great pressure from Ezekiel Rose, the junior, to help bring the punt team on. That's exactly what the Mountaineers needed on their first defensive set of downs. They get aided by penalties, but pressure, a three-man rush, is able to force Shimanek out of the pocket and into the arms of Ezekiel Rose. So perhaps for the first time today, we'll see a punt from Dominic Panizzolo, who can punt it rugby style or regular style. Primarily a right-footed kicker, although we're told he can also kick with the left. Sims on the back pedal and catch. Favorable field position now for West Virginia on their first drive of the third quarter. Let's take a look at this afternoon's game track brought to you by Taco Bell. We mentioned for Texas Tech, six drives in the first half. Four of them ended in touchdowns. The bottom there, though, is what's a little glaring for West Virginia. Minus 10 rushing yards among running backs. Seven carries for 13 yards. And they wanted to get the ground game going to complement what Will Greer can do in the passing game. For Shimanek, though, for Texas Tech, second time this year he's passed for four touchdowns in the first half of a game. Crawford, the recipient of the pitch, gets to the 47-yard line. And, Mike, this is the best starting position the West Virginia Mountaineers have had offensively. Let's see if they can take advantage of it with the passing game. We know the running game has been struggling. Can they do it through the air? Greer stands tall off of two feet, and his throw into the hands of Gary Jennings, just a hair ahead of the defense. We haven't mentioned David Sill's name in a while. This might be an opportunity on third and three if they decide to throw the football to go the, to their most reliable weapon. Number 13 in gold and blue to the bottom of your screen. Greer throws, and it was behind Sims. Incomplete. They're now... Two for seven on third down, well below their 40% average for the year. And, Mike, they don't take advantage of terrific field position, and that could come back to haunt West Virginia if they kick the football back to the Red Raiders and this score gets lopsided in a hurry. That's in waiting on the punt from Kinney. Remember, West Virginia has alternated punters today. So disappointing drives for both teams to get things going here in the third quarter. Score still same as it was in the break. The Red Raiders up 11. Both teams having punted to open the third quarter. The ball back with Texas Tech. After a touchback, they've got it at their own 20-yard line, 11-16, left here in the third. It's been a tale of two halves this season for West Virginia, and the second half has not been very good defensively. Well, this today, 28 points in the first half, so you have to be able to be better, find a way to get some traction on defense in the second half. Stockton on first down, cuts back inside, and gets to just about the 30-yard line on a nice first down run with a senior from Cibolo, Texas. Good feet on the boundary by Stockton. It's going to be a first down on the first play of the second drive here for the Red Raiders. See if they can make an adjustment moving forward here. He gets it again, averaging seven yards a carry coming into this game. Just with his elusiveness, you can see why. The quick feet making people miss, especially on that first down run in the backfield. It looked like David Long was going to come up from that linebacker spot and he had had Stockton in his sights but he was able to use those quick feet chop the feet, get outside and turn a negative run into a positive run.
Second down and five, and a big open hole for Trey King. First down and then some as he turns the legs to the 48, a gain of 13. And Mike, it's been a little bit of everybody in the backfield. It's been Stockton, King, the running of Shimanek. They've done it all on the ground. Shimanek thinking big here. Now chase back, a back foot throw, and he's got a completion at the 35-yard line. QT tumbles forward even when Shimanek is on his last leg. He still finds a way to get rid of it. Well, that's the one that head coach Cliff Kingsbury says no, 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 and then yes. And yes ends up for 23 yards down the field to get the football into Mountaineer territory. All of the West Virginia 30. That was one that most times quarterbacks don't get away with. That time the fifth year senior got away with one. The guy who has waited for his time in the spotlight started out as a scholarship quarterback at Iowa, left and decided to walk on for a year here at Texas Tech and has waited his time most recently behind Patrick Mahomes now with the Kansas City Chiefs and has taken over this offense. That, One second on the play out. clock. Yeah. And they've got to take a timeout. Red Raiders on the move with the lead midway through the third. ESPN College Football brought to you by Axe. Find your magic and American Standard. It's West Virginia, the defense with a big test right now as they try and end a nine game losing streak against teams in the top 25. Down by 11 against Texas Tech. And other than the 11 point difference, the big story today has just been total yards. It's been a, a dominant performance by the Red Raiders offensively. Rush yards, passing yards, total yards. And in the first downs, they've been able to generate explosive plays on offense. It was a Texas Tech timeout. They've got it first and 10 at the West Virginia 30. And they have committed to the ground game here on this drive as Trey King has open space. And he's got the end zone. A touchdown from 30 yards out for King. His second score of the year. Ends up being a great timeout by head coach Cliff Kingsbury. Regroup on the sidelines. Get your running game going and utilize Trey King. Good cut, making people miss in the open field. Breaks an arm tackle and then uses his speed to go 30 yards to get into the end zone. been some big plays allowed by the West Virginia defense. That one for 30. And touchdowns of 53 and 60 yards as well. Explosive plays really have followed quarterback Nick Shimanek. And most of the time it's been in the passing game, but now you get Trey King involved. He goes in from 30. And the Mountaineers are down 35-17. It could be worse. You add in the two missed field goals, the, the potential of possibly going for it on fourth and goal before halftime. There were points left out on the field, but on that second drive of the second half, five plays, 80 yards, only 2.05 off the clock. And the fifth-year senior quarterback is leading an offense that is very hot, reminiscent of what his head coach used to do. Now, Shimanek, we told you, he left Iowa and came here to Texas Tech, walked on for that first year, him and his girlfriend. They were refinishing furniture and selling it out of a boutique store just so he could make some money and help out his parents for paying his tuition. It's a skill he's got, learned it from his mom, says if I had to do it again, would not, <laughs> Might not want to do, do it, it again. <laughs> Being on scholarships, a lot more fun. West Virginia is going to take this out. What are you going to be looking for here on this drive? Well, a lot more of Will Greer. I think right now with the way the, the Mountaineers have tried to run the football, it's going to be in the hands and, and more importantly in the right arm of Will Greer. Well, we'll see which arm is holding the ball for the Titans 
come this sun or this Monday on Monday Night Football, whether it's going to be Marcus Mariota back from his hamstring injury, whether it's going to be Matt Castle. Monday Night Countdown gets going 6 Eastern on ESPN. And that game's also on ESPN, too, in Spanish. Colts have won 11 straight in that series. A couple of two and three teams behind the Jaguars in the conference. Yeah, right now it's time to abandon the run if you're West Virginia. I just think you've got to get more opportunities for Will Greer in the passing game. You're down 35-17 with just under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. You've got to find some explosive plays in the passing game and keep that offense on the field. This is the electric guy who transferred here from Florida and big part of the reason why Jake Spavital chose to be the offensive coordinator here under Dana Holgerson because he knew who he'd have as the quarterback. That throw is up top, a tall one. Pulled in by Sills, using his height as he scampers toward midfield, all six foot four. The pass play goes for 23 yards. It's his fourth reception of the game, and that's the guy you want to find in the third quarter to get the Mountaineers back into this football game. Great location, velocity on the ball, gets by coverage, and they're going to take another shot right now. Sims, the intended target down the sideline. Right look there to try and get something right back to the line of scrimmage and maybe catch the Texas Tech defense off guard. Yeah, I love it. I love the aggressiveness of the last two plays. You want to be able to establish yourself offensively. If the ground game's not there, don't waste your time. Let's get, get the playmakers involved and rely on your offensive line for some pass protection. Second down and 10. Jennings. It'll be third and short. Well, those last couple plays have looked a lot more like the West Virginia we've been accustomed to seeing this year rather than the shorter throws to the sideline. Timing, you get open down the field, you don't have a lot of heat. Coming from the edge of the Texas Tech defense. And you've got Will Greer in a little bit more of a rhythm. All right, third and two. Both fullbacks are in the game, Wellman and Wesco. And now Greer is going to be set up outside wide. Not a great snap for Crawford, and he's fighting forward, but he does not get enough to get to the first down marker. That's a tough play call there to decide where you go third and two, pass or run. And the run, which has not succeeded very much today, does not succeed there. Well, if you're getting to that play on third down, you know you're in a two-down situation. Fourth and one. Soft coverage in the slot up top. If Greer goes there. There's a lot of contact there with the pass intended for Sills. And a late flag comes in. That flag could have been thrown about 10 seconds earlier on the hold there. Well, it came from about 25 yards away. That's why it took so long to get there. But it looked like Sykes on the legs of Sills. So you're saying not great velocity on the throw from the from the flag. A little too much air on the flag, <laughs> but it got there eventually. Pass interference, defense, part of the foul, automatic first down. I like the aggressiveness of West Virginia in this try. They, they, they feel desperate. They have to get something going. This is a good design. Sills beats Sykes inside, and that's why he draws the flag. Leading touchdown catcher in the country, David Sills. We're making a run for it. Flag comes down on the back side of the play. Left tackle, Yadni Kajust. And Mike, just when you get the feeling the Mountaineers have some momentum, and, and have some positive reinforcement going. They take another step backwards with a, a holding call. Penalties galore today. With the penalty, it's first and 20. So it makes it first and 20 back at the 48. Spavital having to dig deep into the playbook today. 
Taking a shot down the middle of the field into triple coverage intended for Sills, and a flag comes in. Pass interference, defense number 31. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And Mike, strangely enough, the, the official that was right there, the, the deep judge uh, did not call it. It came from a side judge, but it looked like Justice Parker, who was trying to time his jump, makes contact clearly and didn't allow Sills to go up and get the football. There was contact well before the ball was closed. And we were talking about the penalties. That's actually the 28th penalty or 28th flag to hit the field today. So plenty of penalties, plenty of mistakes mentally and physically. That's including penalties that have been declined and multiple flag plays as well. So lots of referee-related stoppages. Here with six minutes left in the third, West Virginia trying to claw its way back into this game against number 24, Texas Tech. Now Greer targeting one-on-one -on -one coverage into the end zone, incomplete. And flag number 29 hits the deck. At some point, if you're a defensive back, you have to turn and play the football. Did not look like Demarcus Fields did that. Pass interference, defense, number 23, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. John, these are the types of throws with one-on-one -on -one coverage that Jake Spavital in his time watching the film over the course of this week was expecting to have plenty of. Absolutely, 50-50 opportunities on the outside. Can West Virginia's wide receivers, their skill players, win against the corners of the Red Raiders? Crawford drags a few defenders with him to the eight-yard line. This offense has been helped by penalty yards in this drive, but at some point, you have to be able to make it, make it count, make the defense pay for their mistakes with points and with a touchdown on this drive. Loaded up big on the left side. And now taking a shot, back of the end zone, a leaping grab, and it's a touchdown for David Sills. West Virginia right back in it. Mike, we were just talking about winning 50-50 balls. This time, Sills goes up and grabs the perfect pass from Will Greer. It's over to lane the corner, up high enough where the 6'4 junior can go up and grab it. And you can see the excitement. West Virginia feel like they're getting back into this football game. John, I don't think that's a 50-50 ball. I think that's like 80-20 when you're throwing to David Sills. Well, the way it's been today for West Virginia with a hit or miss, with no running game, there's been a lot of 50-50 opportunities. This time, Sills 11 touchdowns on the year and gets West Virginia back in it. Well, with the help of some penalties, 33 yards gifted to them by Texas Tech, West Virginia's David Sills catches his nation-leading 11th touchdown from Will Greer. And all of a sudden, it's an 11-point game once again. 11-point 11, uh, 11 game, eight plays, 75 yards. You mentioned the 33 yards in penalty yardage. But more importantly, the, the Mountaineers found a way to make, to finish, to finish that drive and get back into the game. Here comes Batson from inside his own five-yard line. He's out across the 30, cutting it back at the 40 and there is a flag down on the play we'll check that here as it rests at the 35 yard line
during the return. Holding, receiving team number 11. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Mike Cousins, John Congemi here, which must mean Chris Cotter is over there. All right, gentlemen, I am over. Shimanek throws long on first down. He's got a completion to Kiki QT out near midfield. Big strike with a very generous pocket. 22 yards on the first down throw. And that was a strike on one of the prettiest routes you'll ever see. Corner route, totally turned around the corner from West Virginia. Big cushion to throw the football for Shimanek. After what we just saw in that studio update from Chris, who says noon games aren't exciting? That's right. A lot of a lot of close football games. Stockton, he's slippery. Gets two yards. And here comes tempo by the Red Raiders again offensively. Shimanek with play action. Sitting back and picking up some blocks. Side arms it away. Smart play by the quarterback, Chimanek. No one downfield. It was really a two-receiver route. Play action, trying to move the pocket. West Virginia applied pressure, and that forced Chimanek to his right to throw it away. They're going to need that type of pressure again on third and eight. Man coverage. Somebody has to win offensively. A whistle stops play. Timeout, West Virginia. It's an afternoon that'll make you scratch your head as a head coach. 35-24. It's third and eight coming up here out of a West Virginia timeout. A big opportunity for the Mountaineers defense. A sellout crowd wants to see a stop on third down. Well, I think the change in the timeout that defensive coordinator Tony Gibson wanted looked like they were the Mountaineers were going to go pressure man coverage. Let's see if they go heavy zone and, and bait like they're going to come, but then only rush three. It's a handoff on third down. Stockton gets away from the defense. First down and plenty of running room. And it looks like the defense did not expect that. 29 yards for the senior running back. And Mike, you mentioned this earlier. It's been big plays for Texas Tech. This one doesn't result in a touchdown, but it's a huge run on third and long. West Virginia doesn't come up. They don't tackle in the open field, and that allows Justin Stockton to bounce outside and get the football inside the Mountaineer 25-yard line. No breather for Stockton, who stays in the backfield. Trying to call his number again. Not quite as much luck. David Long, the linebacker, beats him back. What a big conversion by the Red Raiders. Just when you felt like the Mountaineers were starting to get back in, it's Stockton with a huge run. And this team has run the football effectively. 176 total yards on the ground. West Virginia ranked 109th in the country out of 129 teams in rushing defense. And second and 11. Shimanek's got till tomorrow to throw it. A flag comes in as he makes the connection. And it may be holding against Texas Tech. Holding offense number 79. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. I think that's his second holding call on Bruffy, the left tackle. And it just seems like both teams now in this second half, once they get momentum going, it's been penalties and mistakes kicking them back. Second and 21 now for the Red Raiders.
Empty backfield for Shimanek. It's all to set up a screen. Incomplete. So it'll be third down and 21. And that's the energy guy for the Mountaineers, David Long, coming back into this defense. And finally, they're playing with the starting 11. They need to get off the field here on third down, something they've had problems with today. This worked earlier in the drive for a first down. And it's pretty successful here, too. Hand it off to Stockton. See how far he goes. He doesn't get the first down, but he certainly does make a field goal look a lot better. The officials time out. Drayvon Askew Henry, the redshirt junior safety, was slow to get up. And how about that run just to get the Red Raiders in field goal position. It was third and 21. And Stockton again comes up with another tremendous run, 14 yards on the play to, to really give, not only put the football in the middle of the field, but make it a legitimate field goal opportunity with a guy that struggled today missing two kicks. There's got to be a lot swirling through Barden's head right now. From 37. This may be one of the worst Saturdays he's ever had. Well, just a disappointing performance from Barden. And these are not lengthy field goals these are these are kicks you should make and it's keeping west virginia in this football game now we are closing in on more exciting big 12 action this comes your way on espn from the cotton bowl in texas number 12 oklahoma against the texas longhorns baker mayfield starting quarterback for Oklahoma, just one and two against UT. Catch the game on ESPN or on the ESPN app. Will Greer back to throw, and he darts it for first down yardage. Right between the hash marks. Karan White, his reliable 24-year-old target, gets a first down. So nice yardage on first down, right back to the line of scrimmage, and then dragged down to the turf on the next snap. Broderick Washington, the defensive tackle, takes him down, going backwards for West Virginia. And the third time the Red Raiders defensively have been able to get to Will Greer, who has a knack for extending plays, but this pocket just collapsed right around him. This is just a good job of pushing the pocket in the lap of the quarterback. Broderick Washington, strength up the middle. Big time blitz, and Greer didn't see it until it was too late. Colin Hill, the defensive end, first throw and another sack for Texas Tech. And Mike, just when you felt like the Mountaineers defense was giving life to their offense, Two negative plays and two sacks. I'm not so sure the back is ever going to pick up the edge. He gets there late, and that allows Colin Hill a free line, a free reign from the edge, just using that speed rush up the field to get to Will Greer. He makes it third down and 26. Now Greer steps into a long throw, into double coverage, and that ball falls incomplete. It oh, might it was have been tipped. tipped. Oh, and it's taken away. Desmond Smith comes up with it. It looked like it may have hit the ground, but it stays alive. 
And the turnover prone defense of Texas Tech under David Gibbs continues to succeed. It looked like Johnson was back there in coverage as well, but it's for Desmond Smith. What concentration he never gave up, pinned it on his hip. This is a jump ball. Gary Jennings going up for the Mountaineers, two on one. The ball floats in the air, and then Smith's able to pin it right underneath his right arm for the interception. Just a terrific concentration play. So one second remains here in the third quarter. Plus 10 on the year, which is exactly what Cliff Kingsbury wanted to get when he took David Gibbs on three years ago. Same type of defense he had in Houston, a ball hawking one. And Mike, even though that deflates the crowd with a with an interception, the way the Mountaineers have punted the football, that ends up flipping the field for their defense and giving them a chance. As this fourth quarter goes in, down 11, they've got a chance to get the ball back and get some energy back in this building and get back into this game with 15 minutes remaining. Desmond Smith's interception gives Texas Tech the ball. They've also got the lead, 35-24, 15 minutes to play. Don't forget, Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Shimanek unloading toward the sideline, looking for Cantrell, but couldn't find him. Right spot, right place, second and 10. Mike, it's been a long time since Shimanek has missed an open receiver. He had QT over the middle. That time he had Cantrell to the wide side of the field and just missed him. I think this time West Virginia is going to bring the pressure on third down. They tried to play heavy zone. It hasn't worked. This time they may try to heat up the fifth-year quarterback. Shimanek rolling and just has to throw it away. There's a lot of what ifs right now for Texas Tech. What if they have been three for three on field goals? You have a 20 point game. What if they had been penalized almost 20 times today? How would that have affected West Virginia? And so here we are just at the start of the fourth quarter. The Mountaineers are going to get the ball back and a touchdown to make this a four point game. For as uneven as West Virginia has played today, they're one play away from getting right back in this thing. Fair catch called for and taken at the 34-yard line. More college football coming your way later today on ABC. It starts with Georgia Tech and Miami. Miami goes for a 10-game winning streak. How about it? And then off to the Coliseum. Utah and USC. Sam Darnold tries to lead the way for the number 13 Trojans against Utah. For as good as he's been this year, he's also thrown nine interceptions. Yes, he has. He hasn't been well protected, that's for sure. I knew you'd come to a quarterback's I'm defense. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> Crawford with a head of steam. One of the better runs he's had this afternoon. One of the better plays the Mountaineers have had on the ground this afternoon and, and well needed. 19 yards on the ground. It looks like 19 maybe down Sykes for the Red Raiders. He's been exceptionally impactful today, finding his way into the backfield and making life difficult for Will Greer. Crawford has run for 100 yards in all of the first five games this year. West Virginia at 3-2, and two, but only 37 yards today. Coming off a loss last week against TCU. And the two losses that they've had this year have been to very quality opponents. TCU and Virginia Tech, both by the same score, 31-24. to 
trying to snap that slide, as we mentioned earlier, against top 25 teams with Texas Tech at number 24 in the country. The last time that West Virginia won against a ranked team was against number four Baylor. You got to go back to just about this time in 2014, October 18th of 2014. And uh, it was uh, an eventful evening in Morgantown after that game. Most, most big wins are. And for West Virginia, in their losses this year, they've had the ball with a chance to either tie or go up in the game and win the game at the end. So this game kind of gives you that feel. 4.30, 14.30 left to go. Down by 11. West Virginia can finish on this drive. And that's been the motto that this week for this team. They want to be able to finish. If they can on this drive, we may in, we may get ourselves into who has the ball last with a chance to win. In a lot of weeks, that's the game you expect to play, expect to watch in the Big 12. David Gibbs, the Red Raiders defensive coordinator, he says, in this league, I know as a defensive coordinator, I'm going to give up points. Just wanted to be less. And Greer is looking for six points. Throw an end zone. Incomplete. Well, when you've got a target as reliable as David Sills, who's caught a couple already today, it makes it a lot easier to take that shot. And why not? At 6'4", a guy that has 11 touchdowns, he's leading the country. Give him a chance to go up and make the play. That's just good, good offense and better defense. Uh, yeah, right on, right hand on the ball, perfect timing on the play. But you got to give your playmaker a chance to go up and make those catches. Second and ten. Crawford slips one tackle. And grabbed around the legs and brought down at the 47-yard line. Handoff is to Crawford. Tackle made by number 31. Another third down, third and nine. Gain of one. Third and nine, ball at the 46. The Red Raiders have been able to pressure the pocket and win up front on third down. They had two sacks in this second half. Can they pressure again? And does West Virginia maybe want to move the pocket on third down? And Greer goes up top. Nice throw, Gary Jennings. First down, West Virginia. Nice awareness by Greer. They take advantage of a miscue defensively. And Jennings is able to find the open area, the dead area, in the zone on third down. Right back to it. A fake into a deep throw and one-on-one -on -one coverage. A high point grab. There's a touchdown, Karan White. What a catch in the front corner of the end zone. We talked to Karan White yesterday about the confidence when he walked into the room. His offensive coordinator, Jake Spavadol, said, I'm glad he has the confidence. Well, he showed it on this play. Goes up and over Desmond Smith, and what concentration to, to land in bounds for the big touchdown. Down by five, West Virginia decides to go for two here with a conversion to make it a three-point game. Greer brings Jennings in motion. Fakes the handoff. Now rolling. Slips the tackle. Throws to the back of the end zone. And they've got it. Two-point conversion is successful. David Sills all the way across the field. It's 35-32. What a job by Karan White going up, climbing the ladder, making the big play for the Mountaineers getting into the end zone. And then the calm, cool, collective Will Greer finds his playmaker for the two-point conversion, and we've got a game in Morgantown. You certainly got the ability to make some highlight reel plays, and they're probably more expected of you when you've got a brother who plays for the Chicago Bears. Karan White with a touchdown grab. 
And West Virginia, a two-point conversion as well, has made it 35-32 with a sellout crowd here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Mike Cousins, John Kajemi, so glad you're with us. 13 minutes, three seconds to play. This is a talented family here. Kevin, unfortunately, out for the year with Chicago with a broken collarbone. But you have Karan, the wide receiver, Kaiser, the safety, and they're not only a football family because there's basketball as well. And Auburn, Alabama, hoops on the plains. Karan and Kaiser both went to junior college outside of Scranton, Pennsylvania before they came here. They said an average game on a Saturday there, maybe 70 people. You got 60,000 here today. Strong defensive stand on first down from WVU. And right on cue, Kaiser White in on the stop for the Mountaineers. And right now, if you're Texas Tech, you need one first down. You want to quiet the crowd. You want to be able to establish yourself with under 13 minutes left to go in this football game. Your goal is to get one explosive, one first down on second or third down. Throw for Cantrell, too long. For Nick Shimanek, coming into this game, completing 72 of his passes, he needs one here on third down. Crowd back into this game. Mountaineer defense starting to feed off of it. I would expect some pressure on third down in the pocket. Shemenek running, throwing. And that pass was over the head of Cantrell, but incomplete. Nearly scooped by Askew Henry. The defense does its job. Fourth and eight with a punt on the way. And finally, defensive coordinator Tony Gibson congratulating his guys because on first down, second down, and now on third, they're able to come up with big stops, and they should get the ball turned over to their offense in pretty good field position. Panazzolo with a low kick. Sims on the return for the Mountaineers. Stumbles to the 43. A chance to take the lead for West Virginia when we return to Mountaineer Field. ESPN College Football is presented by Vizio, maker of award-winning 4K displays, and in part by the Mazda CX-5. Driving matters. That shirt says Saturdays are for burning couches. They're not just for the boys. Not anymore. Crowd is into <laughs> it right now, Mike. 12.06 left to go in this one. A three-point game. The Mountaineers have never led, trying to get the lead now. Down by as many as 18 against the number 24 team in the country. A strike across the middle for White. Into Red Raider territory. And between Sills and White, you've got your one-two punch in the passing game for the Mountaineers, and Will Greer starting to gain a lot of confidence in the pocket. Career through for 16 on that last play, and now he wants it all on this one. There's a flag. Two of them, as a matter of fact. And Dorsey had no choice. He had to grab Sills or that six points. Pass interference, defense, number 15. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. We talked about it earlier, the potential points left on the board by Texas Tech, but penalty yards have been huge. That's their 16th today. Yeah. 
West Virginia loaded up, looking like it may run. Instead, they fake the run and take another shot at the end zone. Almost pulled home by Jennings. And that was tight and tough coverage on Gary Jennings. Stride for stride is Johnson, the safety running. Some infighting there with the right hand, but he gets his hand on the football without even locating it. Terrific defensive play. Second down and 10. Crawford navigating his way through the big bodies to make third down a little bit more manageable. Gets about five. And if the Mountaineers want, they can go back to that play on third down. Try to spread out the Red Raiders' defense by formation. And they certainly don't have to feel like they need a touchdown here. They were down multiple scores earlier, but the successful two-point conversion needs even a field goal. Ties things up at 35. May get a procedure play penalty here. Full stop. Offense, number eight. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Those are the types of penalties that drive head coaches nuts because it's so far out on the perimeter and you may not even affect the play. You have to be able to get set if you're Marcus Sims on the outside. So now third and 11, a substitution as the fullback Elijah Wellman comes off. Jennings and Sills are back on to the top of the screen along with Sims. Greer looks that way, throws up top, and in between two defenders, that's a gutsy catch for Jennings. And strong after the catch. It's going to be fourth and very short, but it looked like Jennings' second and third effort makes it that way. Splits the defenders, backs into what looked to be a first down, but the officials are going to say he's just short by about a yard. Play clock was down to eight there with Greer looking toward the sidelines. Just inside of 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. There is no timeout on the field. The center moved the ball inadvertently. We're going to reset it. It's fourth and one. The clock will start on the Redford play. But yet it was effectively a timeout. That's right. It gives the coaching staffs on both sides time to think what they want to do, and it looks like the Mountaineers are going to send out their place kicker. So Mike Molina will come on for the field goal here and try and tie this game. And Mike, game hasn't been tied since 7-7. Mountaineers have fought their way back, and can they convert on this 43-yarder? Timeout West Virginia. Firing. West Virginia calls their first timeout of the half. 30 seconds. I don't know about you. I think it would have been a little bit perilous to leave the offense on the field there on fourth and half a yard to go and then perhaps not get it when the alternative was to try and tie the game. Especially given the distance and the location right uh, in between the hash. You're right. And it looks like they're going to keep the uh, field goal unit out on the field and try to tie this game up at 35. I'm not so sure that the head coach Dana Holgerson was talking to the officials about the spot of the football and, and maybe was trying to get that extra half yard or yard needed for a measurement. But where the ball is spotted now, it's it's clearly a yard short. And it looks like the offense is going to come back on the field for the Mountaineers. A bold move, to say the least, for West Virginia. Fourth and one, it's Crawford back deep. And Greer gets under center to try and sneak it. 
Boy, and I don't know if they're going to give him the spot from that far side official, the way he was coming in. It's going to be very close. Officials time out for measurement. I think they're about a half a football short by the way that far linesman came in. It's going to be close. When Greer came up under center, you were hoping that offensive line was going to get that surge. You didn't see it initially, but you couldn't tell where Greer had the football when his knee hit to the ground and when he was tackled. It looked to me that it was going to be about a half of a football short. Now here come the chains. West Virginia first down. By half a football. That's the play, the momentum that the Mountaineers needed on offense. They keep their unit that's been starting to stack plays back-to-back, -back, positive plays, and now you give them a chance to take the lead. Greer over the middle. He's got the catch, and he's got six. Karan White has the touchdown, and West Virginia leads for the first time today. Mike, we've seen bold decisions by both head coaches. Cliff Kingsbury earlier on a fake punt. Dana Holgerson goes for it on a fourth and one, gets it by a half of a football. And on the next play, Will Greer stands tall and throws a strike to Karan White to take the lead. Big extra point. Trying to make it a four-point game. Mike Molina does just that. They went back and forth on fourth down to kick or to go for it. Half of football's length kept the drive alive. White gets six in a Mountaineers lead. West Virginia outscoring Texas Tech 22-7 in the second half to take its first lead of the day, 39-35. And quarterback Will Greer finding Karan White in the end zone. Six games this year, six times that Greer has thrown for more than 300 yards. Greer today at 332 yards and four touchdowns. Staley's kick is a returnable one. Past the 15, and not much more for Batson. Nobody really had a notable first half through the air for West Virginia, but Karan White and David Sills have both come to life. Well, it's been a one-two punch for the Mountaineers in the second half. White, 109 yards, Sills for 78th. Both with a pair of touchdowns, and you get the two-point conversion from Sills. And the Mountaineers really fed off of their defense. It was a turnaround of defense that ignited the offense, and now they have a four-point lead with 9.06 left to go in the fourth quarter. This drive starts at their own 18. Shimanek back to throw, 0 for his last seven. And on first down, it's the running back, Stockton. Mike, the Tech offense has really been stagnant in the second half. Before that little swing pass in the last two possessions, the last six plays have been five incompletions, a one, two-yard run, and then they've had two, three, and out. So besides the one completion there for one yard, this offense has gone nowhere in the last couple of possessions, and they need to catch fire. They need to do something here with this drive.
A handoff on second and nine gets a yard, maybe two. John, third downs have been the loudest here today. You were a quarterback at Pittsburgh, Pitt and West Virginia, huge rivals. What is it like on the field with this crowd? It's not fun. It's not fun when you're in third and long, third and seven, third and eight. And that's exactly what Shimanek's into today and right now. And he has to find a way to win on third downs. Looks like it's going to be dead man coverage across the board. QT would be your guy in the slot. That, that might be where they're looking on third down. Shimanek's on the run trying to spin back. He couldn't stay off the ground. Adam Schuler in pursuit. And a drive ender from the West Virginia defense. And Mike, it's been the defense that really has ignited this crowd and teed up the offense in this second half. Adam Schuler, he's just relentless on this third down pressure. A huge loss on third down and finally gets Shimanek to the ground. Unfavorable spot here for Dominic Panizzolo. Sims with a 49. So a 39-35 advantage. And starting field position in plus territory for the Mountaineers. We're going to revisit something we showed you earlier about the West Virginia defense. And so far in this second half, only allowing seven points. Well, it's been the first half that has plagued this defense, but in the second half, they've really made some adjustments defensively. They've applied more pressure in the pocket. They've taken advantage of some missed opportunities in the passing game by the Red Raiders. And they've given their offense. Or broken chains. They've given the West Virginia offense, Mike, great field position to work from in the second half. And part of what they've been able to do on defense has been because they've had healthy bodies. You mentioned this, and Tony Gibson mentioned it to us as well, is last week against TCU was the first time since spring they had all 11 starters healthy. Now with their ground game, Kennedy McCoy rumbles on first down for a nice pickup. And I think it's starting to become more of a physical game and West Virginia starting to take over the line of scrimmage especially now with a little bit more confidence they're running downhill there's more room for guys like Kennedy McCoy and Justin Crawford to find their way on the ground McCoy bursts through first down this may not be the game with the singular 100-yard rusher as it's become over the first five with Crawford, but doing it by committee may be enough for West Virginia. And remember, offensive coordinator Jake Spavital for West Virginia, his biggest worry was when Crawford's out of the game, can McCoy pick up the slack? Can, can guys coming off the bench pick up the slack in the running game? In this fourth quarter, they found a way. Jennings falls forward inside the 30-yard line. I asked you earlier at the end of the first half, do you think Texas Tech would slow it down? Because they had the ball, chance to kick that field goal, which they ultimately missed off the upright, and then they would get the ball back. Now West Virginia is in a chance to take some time off the clock with the lead. And they probably should. They probably should take the, the play clock down as, as far as they can. Uh, that's at least two plays in a row here where they've snapped it with more than 10 seconds left on the play clock. McCoy dives forward. Third down and two coming up. And, and Mike, that's low for them. <laughs> Quite honestly, normally they're snapping it with about 25, 22, 18. So they are trying. I just don't think teams in the Big 12 are adapted. They're not used to doing that. It's always offense. Let's get more. Let's get more. Let's go faster. And now you see the, the Mountaineers kind of standing around a little bit more than they have in the first half.
Now loaded up and nice blocking holes open up an extra push on the back side of the play from the fullback Wellman. Another first down, another one on the ground. That's just wanting it more and being more physical. You can see the emotion coming from Kennedy McCoy. Feeding off of the crowd, getting creases up front from that offensive line, and then just carrying defenders with him. Good strength. Closing in on four minutes to play for Morgantown. Texas Tech lines up some pressure. White makes the catch and cannot escape the grasp of the cornerback, Demarcus Fields. But a smart play, he ends up staying inbounds. That clock's going to continue to run. And on that last play, Will Greer was able to snap it under 10, under 8 seconds, which is where you want to be right now offensively. West Virginia trying to put to bed a streak of nine straight losses against top 25 opponents. And a chance to do it three minutes and 30 seconds away. Now Greer has another chance at the end zone. A touchdown for Sills, his third of the day, as the nation's best finds Pater once again. Will Greer takes advantage of terrific field position, a strong running game, and then finds his playmaker on the quick slant for six points. That's number 12 on the year for Greer. He leads the country in touchdowns. He's telling his head coach, give me the football. I can get in the end zone. What a turnaround it's been in the second half for West Virginia. Down and perhaps feeling out at halftime. Trailing by 11. Will Greer has resurrected the hopes of Mountaineer faithful. Third touchdown for Sills, and it's the Mountaineers by 11. What a Saturday. 29 unanswered points from West Virginia as they now lead 46-35 with 3.23 to go. They were down 35-17, and the offense has gone to work and not rested once. And it seemed like the game changed on the last offensive play before halftime when the Raiders, Red Raiders missed that field goal. You could just feel the excitement leave that sideline. We saw David Sills there on the bench a moment ago, the nation's leader in touchdown catches. He's responsible for 20 points, those three touchdown catches and the two-point conversion. Well, the Red Raiders have to put a drive together now. They've got close to 500 total yards, but the penalties, 16 penalties for 159 yards, and most importantly, the nine points that they left out on the football field. They have to rally around their fifth-year quarterback, Nick Shimanek, find a way to get a score, and then get the ball back. They empty it out on first down, and a quick throw does not end how they wanted it. Looking for QT. Third drop for him today, a leading receiver. Jiminek for Cantrell, but the blocks all break down on the outside. What a strong play by Kazir White. He fought right through the block and got to the wide receiver. Cantrell on the Red Raiders sideline. Minimal gain on second down. And now you got to make a play on third and long.
Third down, a run play has worked for them multiple times today. This time with Stockton tumbling. The pile is blown dead a yard or two. Short, short of the first down marker. And I think the offense is going to stay right where they are for this fourth down opportunity. Great effort by Stockton just to make it fourth and under a yard. The drive stays alive. Pick up a five on fourth and one. Two timeouts remaining for Texas Tech. Plenty of time the way they operate. They need 10 yards or more here. And Shimanek throws to QT, gets a dozen. That'll stop the clock. They'll move the chains, be able to get up to the line of scrimmage with no problem and waste minimal time. Inside two minutes to go. West Virginia by 11. Shimanek uncorks to the sideline, and his pass is intercepted by... Mike, I guess Kaiser said, if Karan can go up and climb the ladder and catch one, I can do the same thing. Great timing, had his eyes on the quarterback, Shimanek the entire time, has the presence to go up, land in bounds, and the Mountaineer defense, which has played spectacular football in the second half, gets the turnover they were looking for. On this drive, an opportunity to seal a come from behind win. Two timeouts remaining for Texas Tech. So the Mountaineers want to be able to be productive and get a first down here with this drive. Crawford full steam ahead up the middle. Now 90 seconds on the clock. You would think if the Red Raiders defensively get a stop here, they want to call timeout right away. This clock is continuing to go down. The Mountaineers don't have to snap it for another 10 seconds. And everybody in the stadium knew exactly where the ball was going. Right back to Crawford. 56 seconds on the clock. No timeout. I'm surprised that the Red Raiders haven't called one here. You and me both. Well, we've seen plenty of yellow flags today, but no timeout here. Just says white flag from Texas Tech. Yeah, it looks like they've had enough of this second half. The Mountaineers really turning this game around. The streak for West Virginia will be no more. Their first win over a top 25 team since they beat number four Baylor in October of 2014. And the mentor defeats the mentee. We got ESPN goal line coming your way next. And Navy and Memphis from the Liberty Bowl to follow. They got a lot to live up to if they want a game this exciting. Well, this was one heck of a football game. And West Virginia found a way to turn it around in the second half because it looked like the Red Raiders of Texas Tech were going to have their way with the offensive explosion of the first half and being able to control the tempo of this game. But the Mountaineers defensively turned this game right around and led the offense led by Will Greer. He found White on the outside. He found Stills. 
for his 12th touchdown, who leads the country in touchdown receptions. They found a way to get it done. And I think it was more physical play and athletic plays on the outside than anything else. Partner, we had fun. That's Glad everybody absolutely. could be here with us as well. A sellout at West Virginia. Won by the Mountaineers, 46-35. Our production team today, led by Eric Posman, statistician Joe Sullivan, spotter Tim Swartz. Thanks for being a part of it. Navy and Memphis coming up next. My partner, John Kajemi. I'm my cousin saying so long from Morgantown, West Virginia. Trauma.